Hey guys, welcome back to Top NBA. Today is part two of NBA team's most polarizing players. Be sure to check out part one if you haven't already. Let's jump right into it. At number six, Ben Simmons, Philadelphia 76ers. The fact that Ben Simmons, a 25-year-old All-Star, has been on the trade market for months and has yet to find a new team demonstrates his polarization. Some may argue that the most significant impediment is Philadelphia's exorbitant trade demands, but even that points to his odd spot in the NBA galaxy. His defense is possibly the greatest in the business, or at the very least, the most diverse. For a 6'11", 240 pounder, his playmaking is ridiculous. His transition attacks are worthy of their own fireworks. Nonetheless, his inability to shoot, as well as his hesitation to even look at the rim from outside the paint, may be a complete offense killer. It deprives him of a half-court role when he isn't on the ball, and can undermine his aggressiveness if he isn't confident in his foul shots. Almost every other weapon he has at his disposal is razor sharp, but the lack of noticeable growth in his shooting could be the deal breaker. At number 7, DeAndre Aiden, Phoenix Suns. The Suns will not rise in the West until DeAndre Aiden does the same as he did last season. His counting categories dip slightly, but he was more consistently present as a competent screener, dependable anchor, and active glass cleaner. So where does the polarization come into play? He's definitely good, but the question is whether his skill set and approach will result in actual greatness. Ask the Suns, who turned down his desire for a full five-year extension. He may be an important member of the team, but he isn't necessarily entitled to all caps treatment. Stardom. He spends much of his time inside the arc. He rarely makes it to the free throw line. He doesn't always enjoy the physicality of being in the center. In terms of statistics, he's more likely to turn the ball over than to get an assist. Nobody expects him to be perfect, but the bigger concern is that it's unknown what his ideal form should look like and how powerful it would be. At number eight, Jordan Clarkson of the Utah Jazz. This is hard considering the Jazz have been instrumental in bringing out Jordan Clarkson's finest since signing him in December 2019. They've welcomed his quick trigger and given him a neon green light to attack, and he's reacted by winning Sixth Man of the Year last season. Giving Clarkson this much leeway, though, necessitates preparing for some awkward situations. He'll take any shot that comes his way, whether it's a simple catch and release or a difficult one on the move against a tight defense. He isn't nearly a black hole, but it's clear that scoring is his first, second, and third priority. When he hits his target, the shot loudness appears to be fine, but when he doesn't, it can be grating. He's a natural scorer, but not a natural shooter. For someone who fires from long range as frequently as he does, his career connection rate of 33.8% leaves a lot to be desired. At number 9, Kyle Kuzma, Washington Wizards. Kyle Kuzma isn't the only ex-Lakers player to appear on this list. That is most likely not a coincidence. Because the Hollywood spotlight is unlike any other in the NBA, purple and gold players are nearly always praised and criticized more than they deserve. However, Kuzma's game plays a role in this as well, and so does his output. He rarely, if ever, makes an impression as a passer. His scoring isn't particularly efficient, and his per-game production increased in his second season. In the past, his defense has been terrible. It isn't anymore, but reputations are difficult to change in that regard. Although stardom isn't unlikely, he's quietly settled into a beneficial two-way role. In a pinch, he can generate offense, hit enough threes to keep opponents honest, and typically holds his own defensively. He's establishing himself as a quality player, but his name carries more weight and elicits more reactions than other players in comparable roles. At number 10, De'Aaron Fox of the Sacramento Kings. We could take the safe route and start Marvin Bagley III or Buddy Heald here, but De'Aaron Fox is a more intriguing option. Given the expectations on 2017's number 5 pick and the sky-high potential he's exhibited on occasion, he's definitely the superior option, because Heald has established himself as a specialist and no one is racing to handle Bagley's growth. Perhaps this isn't fair to Fox, considering this property doesn't have the best reputation in terms of development. However, it's worth noting that after witnessing lead in offense for three seasons, the Kings spent a lottery pick on two other point guards in consecutive drafts. On a perhaps related note, Fox's numbers are all down this season. The first of his five-year $163 million contract inked last November. He's been the best player on some poor teams in the past, but perhaps he's simply out of his depth as a franchise focal point. Well guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to Top NBA, and hit that notification bell so that you never miss a video. See you all next time.